In the first video, we learned about different types of motion. In here, we concentrate on the straight line motion. In that, we learned about uniform motion, non-uniform motion, rate of motion or speed, and average speed. And Jaya here welcomes you to Easy Way to Physics with Jaya. Please subscribe the channel if you did not subscribe it. Also, tap the bell button to get the notifications. Straight line motion is of two types, uniform motion and non-uniform motion. We can learn about it in detail. Look at this diagram. A car is moving on a straight line. How it is moving? After each 5 minutes, it covers 10 km each. That means from 0 to 5 minutes, it traveled 10 km then the second 5 minutes, that means 5 minutes to 10 minutes, that interval of time, it covered again 10 km. 10 to 15 minutes, that is again 5 minutes interval of time, in that it again it covered 10 km. In the fourth section, again 15 to 20 minutes, in that again it covered 10 km. Like that in total 20 minutes, it covered 40 km. Equal distances in equal intervals of Time. Each 5 minute interval it covered 10 km, 10 km like that. Such type of motion is known as uniform motion. When an object covers equal distance in equal intervals of time in a straight path, it is called uniform motion in straight line. That is the definition for uniform motion in straight line. Here, the clock needle is also moving in the same way, but it is in a circular path. The needle covers equal distances in equal intervals of time in a circular path. Such type of motion is known as uniform circular motion. When an object covers equal distances in equal intervals of time in a circular path, it is said to be in uniform circular motion. Then what will be non-uniform motion? Just opposite to that. That is, if an object does not cover equal distances in equal intervals of time, it is called non-uniform motion. That means in each interval of time, if we find out the distance covered, that will be different. So definition for non-uniform motion, if an object does not cover equal distances in equal intervals of time, it is called non-uniform motion. Here, two charts are sh given showing uniform motion and non-uniform motion. In the first chart, a car starts at 9 o'clock and after each half an hour, that means at 9 o'clock, 9.30, 10, 10.30 and 11 o'clock, how much distance it covered, that is noted in the second column. In the third column, it is calculated how many kilometers it covers in each half an hour, each 30 minutes. First 30 minutes, 10 kilometers, second 30 minutes, again 10. Like that, each 30 minutes, it covers 10 kilometers each. That shows it is uniform motion. In the second chart, it shows uh, each 30 minute it covers different distances. First 30 minute 8 km, second 30 minute 8 km, third 30 minute 14 km and the last 30 minute 12 km. That shows it is not uniform motion. It is non-uniform motion in the second case. Here, I have added one more column in each chart, which shows the distance traveled in unit time. Here it is one minute, how much distance it is traveling in one minute. How we will calculate? Uh, we have the distance traveled in 30 minutes in the third column. That distance divided by 30 will give you the distance traveled in one minute. So, first to column 10 divided by 30 will give you 0 0.33 km per minute. So, in each case, we are getting the same value in the first chart, 0 0.33 km per minute. That is the distance traveled in unit time. Here, the unit time is 1 minute. Same way, in the second chart, 
we are calculating the distance traveled in unit time that we get in the first case it is 8 divided by 30 that is 0 0.266 kilometer per minute. Here we are getting different values in different cases. So distance traveled in unit time is different for non-uniform motion and same for uniform motion. The distance traveled in unit time is called speed. This is the definition for speed also. Distance traveled in unit time is called speed. What do you mean by unit time? Unit time can be 1 second or 1 minute or 1 hour. Unit means it is related to 1. You know that. So we used to use some units for measuring speed. So for measuring speed, the units we use is meter per second, kilometer per hour, kilometer per minute, like that. We used to say aeroplanes have very high speed whereas buses have less speed, right? Why? Because an aeroplane covers around 2000 kilometers in one hour, whereas a bus covers only 60 kilometers in one hour. So, aeroplane have high speed. Then, what about? Now, what about the speed of light? You learned about that. 3 lakhs kilometers in one second. That is the speed of light. We can't imagine that speed, right? How we are calculating the speed? There is a formula for that, that is speed is equal to total distance travelled divided by total time taken. So if we know total distance travelled by the vehicle and if you know the total time taken, we can calculate the speed of that vehicle. For example, if a car is travelling 120 kilometers in uh, 1 hour or 2 hours, then uh, its speed will be 120 divided by 2 that is equal to 60 kilometers per hour. In real case, uh, for a long journey, vehicle cannot travel at the same speed. Sometimes it speeds up, sometimes its speed reduces. So, we calculate the average speed. What we are getting using the formula is the average speed. That's why we are calculating the average speed as the total distance traveled divided by total time taken. And this is for non-uniform case, non-uniform straight line motion in that the average speed we are calculating as total distance traveled by total time taken. If S is the total distance traveled and T is the time taken, the average speed V is equal to S divided by T. Thus in uniform motion the speed remain the same at every point. If you calculate the speed at any section of the traveling, the speed will be the same in the case of uniform motion. Whereas in non-uniform motion, the speed at different point will be different. That's why we are calculating the average speed in that case. In non-uniform motion, we calculate the average speed that is different at different points of the movement. Now practice more numerical problems with the formula we studied. Apply the units at, after getting the answer. Enter your doubts and suggestions in comment box and subscribe the channel if you did not subscribe it. Thank you.